and Dr. Sunil Futado, Professor and Head of the Department of Neurosurgery at Ramaya Medical College and Memorial Hospital. Regarding post-concussion syndrome, it's a very common problem case faced by individuals who have suffered mild head injuries. When I say mild injuries, I mean to say that the level of consciousness is not as severe so that they cannot understand what is happening around them or they are comatose. When we talk about this, I mean to say that their Glasgow Coma Scale is above 13 out of 15. Some people face a lot of problems. It could be uh, cognitive problems. They can have difficulty in understanding what they read, recollecting what they have seen or read, have a lot of mood, anxiety, depression, a lot of uh, sleep problems or insomnia as we say. Some people also can have headaches, hearing or vision, a buzzing sound which they can hear in their ears repeatedly or frequent episodes of fatigue or tiredness. These are most of the common symptoms which one faces with post-traumatic concussion syndrome. Most of us would have had some concussion in our lifetimes. We usually come out of it, but some would have symptoms which can linger for days, weeks or even months. If the symptoms uh, are present for more than three weeks and definitely beyond three months, then of course it is something which has to be evaluated. Why do some people have post-concussion syndromes and some do not? Some people may have it for beyond three months to years. It is usually said that those individuals who are more anxious, who have some sort of memory disturbances immediately following the head injury, who had a brief loss of consciousness for some time after the head injury, and patients who, with the female gender who had head injuries are more prone to have post-concussion syndromes. They've done various studies, including looking at MRI, CT scans of individuals who have had this kind of a syndrome. And these are the most common factors why they are found to have post-concussion syndrome. Why do some individuals have this? It has been attributed to change in the autonomic functions in the brain. After the head injury, there are changes which are occur in the signals which are conducted from the brain to very independent structures called autonomic systems, which regulate our heartbeat, which regulate our consciousness, and also regulate our breathing, our response to the surroundings. So especially when there is a damage to these structures, which cause a change in the signals to the autonomic function, to the autonomic system, especially nerves like the vagus nerves, these individuals are seen to have more chance of having post-concussion syndromes. Also, analyzing the scans, those individuals who have had some amount of, as we say, volume loss in the brain after a head injury are more prone to have these kind of symptoms. Changes in the hormonal transmitters in the brain, which can occur due to any type of head injury, whether it's mild, moderate or severe, these changes also are known to have post-concussion syndrome to have developed in these individuals. So if any individuals has a lot of uh, memory, cognitive, sleep disturbances, behavioral or mood disturbances, it's apt to have it evaluated by a neurologist or a neurosurgeon and then get the appropriate treatment, which is usually symptomatic and many individuals come out of it within a few weeks to months. Thank you.